Okay, I've created a new blank uh, collection here, and there's nothing in it to start. So what we're going to do is add things. So first, it's the Gather tab. So click on Gather, and go off to your local file space, and I'm going to go to my F drive, and browse down to get some. Okay, I've dragged in a bunch of files. I've got uh, a couple JPEGs, some PDFs, and some HTML. So I'm going to go Create, and I'm going to build the collection. Okay, it tells me that if six documents were processed, so let's take a look at the Enrich tab and see what we've got. Now for the image ones, there's not a lot of data extracted. Hmm, interesting stuff. ICC profiles if you're into that. It's a little bit, but not all that much. Um, the PDFs, a little bit more. We see again, it would be nice if the PDF box extension was working, we'd have better data. We have a little bit. The HTML one, we see lots of data here. Coverage, descriptor, keywords, publisher, subject, all sorts of stuff. So uh, these ones have a lot of metadata in the head section of the document, so a lot of that comes in. Next, what we want to do is add some stuff because we're going to have to create a three, a minimum of probably three indexes, a title one, an author one, and a subject. So we're going to use DC metadata to do that. So I've typed in some uh, metadata for the first one, a case of identity JPEG. Now I'm going to do type in metadata for the rest of them. I've now cataloged one of the PDFs and I'm continuing to type in the metadata. Okay, I finished uh, adding my metadata to my one, two, three, four, five, six files I brought in. So you notice I've got titles, multiple authors, multiple subjects, and keywords added to that. And that's all I'm going to do for now. Now you notice I've made a few typing mistakes. This happens. It's not a problem. Uh, I've gone back and corrected it. So will this stay in my index? No. What happens, it's an orphaned entry. So when I build and then I close this and go back in later, this will be gone. So it's only if it's applied to your metadata does it stay. So our next step now is to change our indexes to use this metadata and then build again. To work on your access points, you go to the design tab. Now there's two types of access points, search indexes, uh, the full text one, any document ones you have will be in that, and there's a title one. We're going to remove the title one and I'm going to remove the file name one. They don't provide much value. I'm going to go with the full text one and all the documents. Because I have subject headings I've added, you say, well, maybe you should have a search one for those? Possibly. We can also allow people to browse them. So the indexes here are the browsing ones. So let's take a look at that. The file name one, EX source, should always be removed. I'm going to remove that. The title one right now is set to DC title if it exists or EX title. And that's fine. I do like to double click this and configure the arguments by removing this part here, the partition type, uh, you, or setting it to none. Uh, setting it to none is probably, that way it doesn't break it up into groups. I don't really like the grouping. If you had thousands of uh, records, yes, but for a small part, no. So we're going to remove that. Now, those are default indexes, and they're going to have a particular format for them. In fact, if we go off and look, we could look at the format. But first, let's figure what additional indexes we want. This is our title one. We're going to want one for authors. Now, when we select classifier to add, there's a pull down that will show us what ones we want. Authors you want in an A to Z compact list. So select that from the pull down and click add classifier. And it's going to ask you what options do you want. Well, you don't want it to go after DC title. You want it to go after DC creator. And uh, you probably want to change the button name from, otherwise it's going to display creators, which is going to confuse users to something like authors or author. I'll go with authors as an index name. Let's click OK and that's it. So there's our author index. Our next index we want to add is a subject index. So let's go off and A to Z compact list, click add classifier and we want this to, now we could type in the metadata element, but you can also browse for it. So ED, do, 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 subject and keywords, DC subject and keywords, which can be abbreviated to DC subject. Uh, 
and I'm going to change the button name to something like subjects. So that's the menu label. I'm going to click OK. Now let's build this and take a look. OK, we did create, build, now let's click preview and take a look. OK, and there it is. We now have uh, our full text search engine is there. Search is every word. We've got the title index, which is one of the default ones. We've added two new ones, an author index and a subject. So let's click on authors. And there's the authors. Now you notice I put their last name, first name. Oops. Ah, I forgot to fix that one. So I put, uh, what I did is I put DC title in, in the wrong place. Ah, we can fix that. And we have a subject one uh, here. There's our subjects. Again, so we see, uh, now again, you notice I've been inconsistent. I have inflation uncapitalized. Bad, bad, bad librarian. I've got library science. If I click on that, we see there's one there. Why do I have, yeah, one science. Information retrieval. I, oops, I did not fix this one here. I've got that bad metadata there. So you have to be careful when you're doing the metadata to make sure uh, if you check your indexes to see if you've got misspellings. Uh, capitalization is not consistent and things like that to solve those problems. And we have our titles. Now you notice here's one of the issues about multiple documents. This index has both uh, HTML files, so here's the link to the HTML one, which works well. See, that looks nice. HTML is quite useful as a content type. We have some image files. Uh, this will have nothing in it because image files have no text in the document, but there's thumbnails of the book covers. And finally we have the PDF ones. Here's the converted PDF that may be good or may not be good. Um, so there it is there. And the other icon, if I go back to it, is the original source file icon. There it is there. So this is a thumbnail icon. This is a source file icon. So later on we're going to cover how to format these indexes to make them look nice. Now we have all the indexes we want, but none of the data we want is being displayed. If you're going to have an author index, you have to display the author's names. So we have to change the format. To change the format, click on Format, Format Features, and under Choose Feature, choose the index you want to format. In this case, let's say we want to format the author's index. Now it'll be grayed out. So you have to click Add Format to work on it. The simplest thing we're going to do right now, we'll explain this a lot more in upcoming ones, what all these things are. Uh, there's a link to the icon. There's a source link if it's a thumbnail icon. Uh, that would be the PDF icon up there if it is. And there's the title is explained. Now, we're just going to change EX source to be something like dc.creator, because that's where we put the authors in. So we're going to replace EX source with DC creator for this index. C R A T O R. There. In brackets, there uh, shows that this is a metadata element. You notice the C is capitalized because the metadata elements have a capital C. The next index we're going to format is our subject one. So down here, uh, we've chosen CL3. We're going to click Add Format, and we'll do the same thing. We'll get rid of EX source. Now, if you can't remember what it is that you're putting in, is a DC subject, you notice there's an insert variable that will actually show you what to put in. It actually puts in a second set of uh, square brackets, so you have to be careful. So what I'm going to do is delete the EX source here with the square brackets and insert DC subject. Now, because I only change how things look, I don't have to rebuild the index. I can click on Preview Collection, and here's my author index. Let's take a look at Mr. Conan Doyle. We see there's his name. Now, one of the things is some of these documents have multiple authors. You notice by default, it only shows the first value of any metadata element. Later on, we'll show you how to get them all in there. We want to see all the authors, we can. What about subjects? Information retrieval, there's the subject. So now we have the basics of creating a collection. The final part to doing something with this would probably be to uh, add a nice banner. So if we go up to general, format general, the URL to about page, click on that, and we can browse for a banner somewhere. I don't have a banner, but uh, if I did have one, I just have to find it. it. Might be somewhere in here. 
and I could actually uh, put a banner on that. I'm not going to put it in now and you'll see later. I'll show you uh, next week how to create that banner using PowerPoint. Now when I'm done working with this I can do file close and there's my collection. If I want to delete it, this is just my sample one, I can do file delete. This is my test collection I started. I'm going to um, put a tick mark in and I'm going to delete it because I don't need it. There we are. It's, oh. I still have it open in my web browser. Better close that. There we are. I want to delete. Oh, it couldn't be completed deleted. I probably have some of this open too. So anyway, I'm going to close it and exit Greenstone. And